Hey what up guys, so today we'll be um, talking about how to make a Java project file or folder or whatever for like so you won't so you won't be like dependent on IDEs. So IDEs are integrated development environments which helps you um, code and it's really it's really cool to use and really efficient. But I mean sometimes you just wanna throw a bit of color instead of the same old brown and freaking gray but I mean hey whatever so there's a couple things you can do um, you can try out Vim uh, it was actually really efficient as well um, typing wise but also a lot of um, a lot of IDEs already have Vim because it's that awesome but yeah kind of looks like kind of like this there's also like a Vim text editor thing I think I have it no I do not okay Maybe not. I don't know. So yeah, Vim, check it out. There's also Nano. Nano is actually really cool. Uh, yeah, there's a wiki. <laughs> but what well, you can also use is text editors. So some of the text editors are Notepad++. So this will just help you code. Um, just basically highlight stuff. All it, what it, all it really does. Blah. But yeah, pretty easy. Just, you know. Just download page there. And then there's also Sublime Text 3, I think. It's also another um, text editor. Really cool. Uh, I prefer actually Sublime Text. I'm actually, I have it right now. Um, let's see if we can open another. Well, I can show you, I can show you like all the other text editors. So yeah. And then there's also Atom. It's another popular um, text editor. I also use Atom. It's really really cool and then there's there's a lot of text editor guys but these are all the best ones I can find and of course there's a uh, visual studio studio code and here's brackets so brackets is actually mainly used for web development but you can also I think you can use like Java stuff in it I don't know this is mostly web development though visual studio code is uh, another up-and-coming text editor it's actually really well defined, redefined, or well defined. I don't, I don't know. It's actually pretty cool. So yeah, I can show you like all these text editors. So let's go to the Notepad. So this is what it kind of looks like. Um, you can change um, the style. It's not really that that pretty to look at, but you can change it to like Hello Kitty or. Whatever. So let's not save it. Um, so that's what it looks like. It's, it's really fast to open as well. So let's see if we can get a new... Um, so this is subline text. Computer science, Java... Um, I don't know. Select folder. So this is subline text and this is... Let me show you what this looks like. And it kind of looks like this. This is pretty cool. Um, you can change it, of course, um, to whatever, oh wait, or not, I don't know. Oh, it already was, so yeah, you could do that, but I'm going to change it back, because, yeah. And Control shift p and you can install packages, so there's a whole bunch of other packages you can install, so yeah. And then there's Atom. Let's open Atom up. So Atom is is takes up a lot of RAM. It's a uh, it's kind of like Sublime Text, but with um, more functionality, I guess. And wow, that's actually my whole desktop. All right, so check this out. Let's see if we can just open this. Um, open in a new window. Open a new window. So yeah, this is Atom. It's really cool. Um, it takes up a lot of RAM. It's a little slower than Sublime Text um, on startup, but I mean it has a lot more to offer as well. So yeah, if you go to the themes, there's all the themes you can use. You can change it up a bit. Add a material is um, a pretty good one. So let's go to that one. So yeah, you can change it up quite a lot. So we go to there 
and you can change the UI and the syntax theme independently, which is cool. Let me change it back. It's kind of slow though. It's the only drawback, of course. And where was it? One, it's one dark. Yeah, it's one dark. Okay, so yeah, that's that's Adam. Pretty cool. And there's brackets, of course, which I'll show you in a minute. Brackets. Uh, another text editor. It's mostly for um, web development, though. So, yeah. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I think you can you can do Java and C and stuff in this as well, though. And then there's also Visual Studio Code. So yeah, and like most of these text editors also support um, what should we call it? Vim. Yeah, Vim. But I don't think Nano. I don't think it's for Nano. I don't think it wouldn't really make sense though, because I mean, it's not it's, it's not Vim. So then there's animation. Yeah, I mean, there's this is Video Studio Code. It's pretty cool. Um, I find it though, like the the extensions in the right place. It's not not that good. Could be better. Um, but everything else is good. It works well with GitHub as well, so that's cool. Also, Adam does too. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's all the text editors. So now choose your text editor. Once it's chosen, you can start making a project, um, a Java project. Um, so we're gonna call this saving private Dan, of course. This is the the game series that I'm doing. So once that folder, you may have created that folder. We can create like four different folders. The first one's called BIM. Second one is gonna be called like res resource folder, basically. Then the source folder, and where all the code's going, and the commands. So this will actually the command folder is basically all the commands to run your um, your your stuff. So yeah. Um, Let's go ahead and put some source codes or code and stuff. So I already have this temp folder here, so I'm just gonna drag and drop all this stuff from my stuff. So yeah, instead of those two stuff. So anyways, in the rest folder you can have three folders of course, the entity, font, and tile. Um, this is basically just all the resources that you can use. Organize it as you will. And then of course the source folder where all the the sweet stuff happens, and then we got some. And then in the commands folder, it's a very important folder, I think. I hope. And okay, so if you're running a Windows, you can follow me. But if you're running running a Linux, a Linux, then um, I can do that. I can also show you how to make commands and stuff. But right now, for Windows people, listen up. And you're gonna make a, a bat file. Like that, so we go yes. New text line, make another one called freaking run dot bats and cool. And then you're going to go to edit, I think. So this is build. So what you're going to do is going to go at echo off, and this is actually um, you go to your command window, and if you actually type in that at echo off, it just turns off the um. The, like, the, I don't know, what do you call that? Anyways, so once you've done that, you can do, um, I'll go CD. So this will go to the, the previous directory, and then you can do echo building, and I'll just do that, and then here's actually the Java command. So you're gonna write uh, javax C, and then dash, um, D, then bin, which is the folder that we made previously, and then we need to say the source paths, which is res, and also the source folder, of course. So yeah, if you're running Linux, it would be that colon, but here in Windows, it's going to go on. And then source com, and then Zerilius. so this is basically the path to the main, um, main class. And it was launcher Java. Then echo. No, 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 we're not done yet. Then cd back to the commands. And then we're gonna go echo 
and um, done basically building it just to specify that and that's it basically it that's um, your bat file right there I think hopefully yeah so now for the run um, so in running what you're basically going to do is basically the same thing I go off CD to the previous directory and then um, Java CP change um, actually no it's not every I don't know oh class file class path that's what CP stands for and of course res so this is where all the all the class files and the res file is going to be um, and then then the main menu or not the main menu but the um, whatever it's called main class echo uh, done right and running so yeah and that's it so all you need to do is um, shift right click on the whatever folder then open command window here and build it and it's done building so if we go to the bin you can see that we have our class um, files there and then we can run it and we get that so yeah awesome so that's how that works all right so now we're gonna do the Linux tutorial thing. So in Linux, you have something called shell script, which I can't run on my Windows. It's, I think it's. I don't think I can do that. I don't know. Maybe. Well, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> maybe I can run it, but maybe not. Um, but one thing you can do on Linux is actually run a Java file um, with a C program. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, because I can do that. Because I have the C C Gwin on my windows. So anyways, so if you're running Linux, you can follow me right now. So again, the same kind of folder setup we got going. In commands, I'm going to make a new folder called script. And um, this is where we're going to keep all our, our scripts. I think that's how you spell it. All right. And we're going to have two different scripts. We're going to have um, a build.c. that. And we're also going to have a, where is it, text document, run.c, yeah, okay, so in the build.c, um, if you drag this over here, we have this beautiful thing, and of course, since this is a, a C program, we have to include a DC files and stuff, um, stdlib.h, we need that library, and I think we also need this library. We need two libraries. I think we do, anyways. Maybe not, but I really tried it out. Actually, we do need to. Never mind. And then, of course, we have the main. And turn zero. And we want to printf. And I guess that's already with us. It's also really cool using text editors because they also have like built in stuff. Um, that helps you get stuff done faster. So, and system, we're gonna use a system command, by the way. For running Linux, of course, it's um, cd then space dot dot. In Windows, there's no space. And you can do the and, and thing. And then this is where we're gonna type in our um, Java command. Um, and here's one key distinction. If you're running Linux again, you have to use the, the colon, but on Windows, so I'm going to use the, the, the average semicolon. And uh, this, is really, this is the path to the main class, of course. Oh, yeah, game, right? Yep. Why can't my fingers type? Why not? Why? Um, then, of course, we're going to print F, and you're just done. So, yeah. That's basically it. Uh, building. And that's the build. And we can just open this one up. And there is the run. And basically do the same thing. So we should copy and paste it. And the only thing that's going to change is a couple things. This one included. Then the class path. Of course it's been. Then the res. Then pass to the main, 
Um, class launcher. There we go. And running. And then running. And that should be it. Um, to be honest, I actually forgot how to compile. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. Um, Let's see if I can remember. So it's, of course it's GCC, um, but then like, is it? I think it's Dasho. Then we go build dot c, then build, or is it build and build dot c? I think it's that that way. So let's try that. Does that work? Yeah, that works. So exactly like that for the run. So run and run dot c. And there we go. We got two. Nice. So we're gonna put this in the commands. This might uh, make it like really tricky. Um, and we should call this uh, batch files. Put the two batch files in there. No, ho, ho, go away. Didn't mean to do that. Um, so yeah, you can like click on them. But what I like to do is just have a whole new command window and just build and run it and voila. I wonder which one's faster, but I think it's going to be batch files. That's my my thought. But yeah, that's basically how you do it for Linux. All right, let's be cool. And yeah, that's basically that's basically it. Uh, that's how you that's how I set it up. Anyways, there's different ways to set it up. Of course, you also have like lib folders and stuff. Basically, to do the same thing as you will do for the res folder, the resource folder. Um, but instead of doing res, it'll be like lib, you know, res semicolon lib, and then that's it, basically. So, yeah, that's how you do that. All right, see you guys in the next video.